hello everyone in this lecture i am going to discussing about the how to determine the stresses and deformation in the composite wall so first we will discuss about the what is the composite wall so composite wall is defined as a, a structural member composed of two or more elements of different materials rigidly connected together at their ends to form a parallel arrangement and subjected to a axial loading is termed as a composite wall so let's see the diagram in the diagram we have to observe that one rod is enclosed with the tube and both are rigidly connected at their ends moreover both tube and rod are made by the different material so this type of the member we are calling as a compound bar and also such a section is also known as composite section see such a problem is statically indetermined since equation of statics alone based on conditions of equilibrium will provide only one equation for the stresses in the individual sections so here we will have only one equation by the condition of the equilibrium so we can't able to find the stresses so in the by the single equation so other equation can be obtained from the consideration of the deformation of the whole structure so here we have to use the two equations by one is condition of equilibrium and second equation is by consideration of the deformation consider the effect of compressive load p upon a composite bar consisting of a rod and enveloping the two having the same length but made of the different materials so here we are applying the compressive load let us consider that is the p on a composite bar and one more thing we have to consider that one the tube and the rod so both are having the same length let the end of the collars are rigid so these are the rigid collar and one more thing we are using the so suffix one for the rod so for the rod we are using the one and the suffix two for the tube so for the tube we are using the suffix two so this is the composite bar so here first we have to considering the from the condition of equilibrium so condition of equilibrium saying that one here we are applying the load capital p then this applying load is sharing by the two members that is the rod and two so we are applying the load capital p that is sharing by the rod and the two so that is let us see from the equilibrium condition is saying that one p1 mean so load sharing by the rod plus p2 mean load sharing by the tube so which is equal to the applied load so this is we are saying that one the condition of equilibrium let us consider the, this is the first equation so since the member are of the same initial length so initial we are consider rod and tube having the same length l and also so deformation is under the load having the same amount so deformation in the rod let us consider the delta 1 equal to the deformation in the tube let us consider the delta 2. so here delta 1 equal to the delta 2. so we know that from the deformation formula that is the pl by ae here so delta 1 is nothing but p1 l1 divided by a1 e1 which is nothing but so load on the rod plus length of the rod divided by cross section area of the rod into the ink smallness of the rod which is equal to the p2 p2 me so load applied on the tube length of the tube divided by the cross section area of the tube into ink smallness of the tube so let us consider this is the equation number 2 so second equation is known as the equation of compactibility so here we have to remember that one 
while solving the problems on the composite bar we have to consider the two equations one is the condition of equilibrium that is the p1 plus p2 equal to p second one is the equation of compactibility that is the delta 1 equal to delta 2 this is nothing but p1 l1 by a1 e1 equal to p2 l2 by a2 e2 so these two equation we have to remember while solving the problems on the composite bar see now from the equation 2 we can be write as a p1 equal to p2 l2 by a2 e2 into a1 e1 divided by l1 so here l1 equal to the l2 so here l1 and l2 equal to get the cancel then p1 equal to the p2 into a1 e1 divided by the a2 e2 so now we have to substitute the p1 value in the equation 1 so we will get so equation 1 is the p1 plus p2 equal to p so just now we determine the p1 value by using the so equation number 2 we solve we determine the p1 value then we have to substitute this p1 value in the equation 1 that is the p1 plus p2 equal to p now p1 equal to the p2 into a1 e1 divided by a2 e2 plus p2 so then we have to solve the, this equation so we will get the p2 value is p by a1 e1 plus a2 e2 plus 1 so then we have to substitute this p2 value in the equation 3 so we have the relationship between the p1 and p2 and we got the value of the p2 then we have to substitute the p2 value in the equation so we will get the answer is p1 value is p by a2 e2 divided by a1 e1 plus 1 so so this is the solution for the so determine the load on the composite bars so once we know the load mean so we have to easily determine the stresses in the rod also tube stress is nothing but load divided by cross sectional area so with the help of the, this equation we determine the p1 and p2 so nothing but load we have calculated then applied the so stresses we have to determine by load divided by cross sectional area we can get the stresses so this is the so method for the to determine the stresses by the composite bar so here we have to remember that one the two conditions we have to remember that is the condition of equilibrium condition of equilibrium is saying that one p1 plus p2 equal to p and second one is the so equation of compactibility is saying that one the delta 1 equal to delta 2. so just we have to remember the these two equations then we have to solve these two equations we will get the so p1 and p2 values then we have to substitute the so stresses equation we will get the stresses in the individual numbers so thank you